Hello everybody, this is Basim who's joined the graph and you're watching the first video of a tutorial series where I'll show you how to install Janus Graph and some of its storage backends on a Linux Ubuntu server. In this first video, I'll show you how to install Janus Graph itself and we will test it with the in-memory storage backend. Janus Graph is a Java application, so we need to have the Java JDK or JRE installed on the server to be able to run it. Let's see which version of Java does Genesis Graph requires. I'll go to their GitHub project. And I'll go to the releases section. At the time of recording this video, their latest release is 0.5.2. And they say that it was tested with Java 1.8, which is the same as Java 8. So I'll go back to Ubuntu, and I don't remember the exact package name, so I'll have to do an APT search. I know the name contains OpenJDK in it. And all these are Java package options that we can install on Ubuntu. And we already know that we need the Java 8, Java version 8. But the next question is, do we need to install the JDK or just the JRE? The JDK is the Java Development Kit. This is what you install if you want to compile and run Java applications. But in our case, we will download the pre-compiled version of Janus Graph and we will just need to run it. So the JRE, the Java Runtime Environment, should be enough in our case. And the next question is, do we need the full JRE or do we need JRE headless? Normally on servers, you install the headless version of the JRE, which should be enough to run non-GUI applications. And Janus Graph is a non-GUI application that's made to run on servers. So you'd think that the headless JRE should be enough to run it. But I tried that and I got errors when I tried to run Janus Graph on the headless JRE. So I ended up having to install the full JRE. So this is what we will install today. And I know that most of my next commands will require um, super user privileges, so I'll switch to the super user. And I will do an apt install of this package. And it just finished installing uh, the Java JRE, so I'll clear the screen. Now it's time to download Janus Graph. I want to place it under slash opt, so I'll navigate to this directory. And I'll get the download link from GitHub. This is the file we want to download, so I'll copy the link. And I will use wget to download from this URL. This is the file we just downloaded, so I will unzip this file. This is the zip file that we downloaded from GitHub, and this is the folder that was extracted from it. I want to look at this folder using Windows Explorer. So this is the Genus Graph root folder and contains a bunch of subfolders, but we will only look at the first two in this tutorial series. The bin subfolder, which contains the, the Linux shell scripts and the Windows batch files for running the Gremlin console and the Gremlin server. Gremlin.sh and Gremlin.bat run the Gremlin console and Gremlin server.sh and Gremlin server.bat run the Gremlin server. We also have the conf folder, which contains a bunch of configuration files under it. These configuration files, some of them are for the Gremlin console, others are for the Gremlin server. I think it's a good idea to create a Linux user for running the Genus Graph server. This user can be given only the permissions needed by Genus Graph and not more. And this dedicated user will also make it easier to find the Genus Graph server process if we need to monitor it or kill it. 
So I'll say add user and I'll call this new user Janus. I'll specify the password. And now I'll make this new user the owner of the Janus Graph root folder and all its contents. So I'll use the ch own command. I'll use dash capital R to make it recursive. And then the name of the user is Janus and the group is Janus. And the folder is Janus Graph 0.5.2. So let's check to make sure that this was successful. And you see Janus became the owner of the Janus Graph folder and all its contents. Now I will switch to this Janus user. And I will use it to run the Gremlin server. And I'll do this by executing the script under bin gremlin server.sh. This started the gremlin server and it's now listening to port 8182. Now I want to try sending some commands to this gremlin server from the gremlin console. So I will leave this terminal window open and I'll open another one. And I'll switch to the Janus user. And then I'll execute the script gremlin.sh, which starts the gremlin console. This script is located under slash opt slash Janus graph slash bin slash gremlin.sh. Now I want to connect this Gremlin console to the Gremlin server running on the same machine. So I'll enter the command remote connect tinkerpop.server conf slash remote dot yaml. The command was executed successfully, but I want to look at the contents of this configuration file remote.yaml. So this is the configuration folder and this is remote.yaml. You will see it specifies the host name, localhost, because both the Gremlin console and the Gremlin server are running on the same machine. And the port number 8182, this is the port that the Gremlin server is listening to, and some other configuration. Note that the command that we just entered only connects the Gremlin console to the server. It doesn't mean that every command that we will enter on the console will be sent to the server. To actually send the command to the server, we need to proceed it with column and greater than. And anything that comes after that will be sent to the server. For example, 1 plus 1. This was sent to the server. The command 1 plus 1 was sent to the server. And the result 2 was returned by the server. We just enter 1 plus 1, this will be executed by the local Gremlin console. If we don't have to proceed every command with colon greater than, then we can just say remote, sorry, remote console. This will send every single command we enter to the server. So we do not have to remember to proceed every command with colon and greater than. One thing that surprised me is that when you're working with the Janus Graph server, you don't need to create the graph and the graph traversal source objects. The Janus Graph server already creates them for you. So if you try using the object graph or G, you'll see that both graph and G are defined by the server. So you can start using them right away, no need to create them. Let's see if we have any data in our graph. Let's say g.v.count. And the result is zero. So the graph is completely empty. It doesn't have anything in it. So it just creates a graph and graph traversal source, but there is no data initially. So let's try to add some vertices to this graph. Say g dot add v. Let's say it's a person vertex. 
and we will add a property to this vertex. Let's say the person's name and the first person will be called E1. And let's add another vertex, another person and call it P2. And let's make sure that this data was saved, so g.v.count. And we have two vertices right now in the graph. Okay, so this was easy, super quick to get started, but what's the catch? Let's look at the string representation of the graph object. It says standard genus graph in memory 127.0.0.1. So in-memory means that it's using the in-memory storage backend. So the data, the graph data is just saved in memory and not written to any persistent storage. So once we restart the Gremlin server, all the graph data will be lost. And why did Janus Graph decide to use the in-memory storage backend? Well, the reason is it used this configuration file right here under conf and then gremlin server, and then gremlin server.yaml. This is the configuration file that the gremlin server uses by default, but you don't specify any other configuration file. So let's look at the content of this gremlin server.yaml. You will see that, um, well, there is a lot of configuration, but this line is the most important here. Graph conf slash genus graph dash in memory dot properties. So it loads some additional configuration from this genus graph dash in memory dot properties. Let's look at that. It's under conf directly, not gremlin server. Here it is. Genus graph dash in memory dot properties. And this one, it says storage dot backend in memory. It instructs Janus Graph to use the in-memory storage backend. And that's why um, it will be saving the data in memory and will not write it to any persistent storage. So if you restart the Gremlin server or the Janus Graph server, I'll do Control C on my keyboard here. And this shut down the server. Now let's start it again. I'll run the Gremlin server.sh again. And now we just restarted the server. Let's say if it still has our um, graph data, these two vertices that we added, does it still remember them? Well, before I run any other Gremlin traversals, I need to first disconnect. Actually, remote close. This is to disconnect from the server. And then I'll run remote connect again. And to send all the Gremlin traversals to the server, I'll run remote console. Okay, now let's do g.v.count again. And you will see that there are zero vertices. So these two vertices that we added before, before restarting the server, were forgotten because they were just saved in memory. So once you end the process, they will be forgotten. In the next videos of this series, we will make Janus Graph use other storage backends that actually persist the data. So we will install storage backends like Cassandra and HBase, and we will configure Janus Graph to use them. Thank you so much for watching this video, and see you next time.